And now, the show you've been waiting for. From Channels TV's global headquarters, it's The Other News. And here's your host, O.K. Bakasi. Hi, welcome. Welcome, beautiful people. Uh, once again, this is The Other News. Uh, we are the fresh palm wine that washes down the bitter cola nut that is the Nigerian situation. <laughs> Cheers. Get set for the unexpected tonight. Uh, my guest is a branding and marketing communication expert. Ladies and gentlemen, Charles Otudo is in the building. <laughs> yes, yes. Also on the show, our correspondent, Winter Badmos, will be carrying a certain issue on her head. Mm. All that and more. But first, it's the other news headlines. Uh, the federal government has announced plans to introduce solar-powered tricycles and motorcycles into the Nigerian transport system. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Well, um, FG, please, please, eh, don't involve NEPA. Eh? Eh, because now so solar bill will go to pay for free song. Yeah. Well, according to the, the other news analysts, based on this development, working hours for Keke and Okada drivers will start at the break of dawn and end at the setting of the sun. Because solar-powered machines cannot be agents of darkness. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh. Ukrainian comedian um, Volodymyr Zelensky has been elected Ukraine's president after a landslide victory. Ah, Zelensky is best known for staring in a satirical TV show where his character accidentally becomes president. <laughs> Satirical TV show. <laughs> imagine it, imagine it. I don't, I don't know if you're thinking what I'm thinking. <laughs> so 2023, here I come. Yeah, Binta Badmos will be my VP you know, for gender balance. SLK will be my Secretary of State and uh, AMP. Uh, Dandy Humorous will be my Minister of Happiness and Purpose for Favorite. <laughs> yeah. That's just the interim cabinet for now. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Samantha Soji, a nine-year-old chef who uses her culinary skills to cook for local orphanages and those in need, has said she would one day like to cook for President Buhari. Hey, yeah. You know, why can't more Nigerians just be like this girl? Hmm? Doctors should want to treat the president. You know, that way no need for London. Yeah, Ebukas Taylor should want to dress the president. <laughs> eh? uh, but um, this thing does not apply to lawyers. Or, eh? Before they will say, oh, they want to now sue the president. <laughs> or even boxers, before they too will now say, oh, they want to box Mr. President. <laughs> no, he can't handle that. All right. Minister of Labor, Chris Ngige, has said he's not worried about the number of doctors leaving the country. According to him, Nigeria has a surplus of doctors. So we need to export. <laughs> mm, Aga Minister, this one no be surplus or deficit matter. If Nigeria was, I mean, if that was the case in Nigeria, we would be earning sweet money exporting surplus politicians now. <laughs> huh? Anyway, that's a joke, Sha. I mean, because all, 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 all <laughs> We all know only globally competitive commodities can be exported. Yes. Not local champions. Yeah. Yeah. I can't export those. And now to other matters. The number one enemy of Nigeria's borrowing prospects. Mm. Yes. Has been identified. Yes. Countries are refusing to help us. Because they think this is Nigeria. Everywhere still, when in reality, this is Nigeria. One place still, everywhere else, Pamoy. <laughs> so, please, why are foreign nations thinking like this? Who is, who is spoiling our market? We are the greatest nation in the whole of Africa. Don't make any mistake about that. Please, oh, eh? uh, make a mistake about it greatest and greatest potential no resemble we know which one is our own eh? never mind them 
each of these Nigerian lawmakers take home has been carrying a big question mark for some time now. During the past week, Senator Shewu Sani, in an interview with the news, revealed that he and his colleagues received 13.5 million monthly. 13.5 million monthly. Their own is um, a special case, but wait first. <laughs> See our weddings. See our answers. <laughs> We the people say we are guilty. Foreign countries, don't mind us, oh, all now packaging. <laughs> oh, we are just here packaging. You see, they say dress the way you want to be addressed. So, since we are asking for help, we better start dressing like this. <laughs> At least until we borrow finish. Even though this borrowing thing, self, you know, think about it. Even though this borrowing thing, it don't make sense. It doesn't make sense like that. Fertile land, we have. Resources, we have. Population, that one, Boku. We will have oil. And what do we have to show for it? Only packaging. <laughs> Forget money. It's high time we packaged and started borrowing common sense. Because maybe with common sense, yes, maybe because with common sense, we will see that this is what foreign nations are really saying. Nigerians, they've actually got some leaders of some fantastically corrupt countries coming to Britain. Though he has since apologized, but... What would I do with apology? I need, I need something tangible. <laughs> yes, we need more. We need more. Hopefully, when we get this more, we will use our common sense to know that we should not use it for packaging with 13.5. Or for mansions. Or for tear rubber. But like Daddy Billy says, the most important choice you can make is to maximize your greatest resource, the Nigerian people. Nigeria will thrive. And when every Nigerian is thriving, packaging will come to an end. And I woke up like this. What's that? <laughs> now about Justice Walter Onoge. Code of Conduct Tribunal finds Justice Walter Onoge guilty of false assets declaration for Mr. EJN to forfeit monies in five bank accounts and barred from public office for 10 years. Uh, about justice or not, I, I must say a lot has been said. So what more can be said of sayings? Saying things about the things said of the judiciary and the... Um, um, uh, uh, really? Okay. Uh, well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, joining us for the first time all the way from the Nigerian Supreme Court for her first ever interview is the one, the only, Lady Justice! <laughs> yes! Welcome, ma'am. We are so honored to have you on the show. Thank you, okay. But please calm down. This your shouting is not allowing my skill to balance properly. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. Uh, Lady Jane, your, your voice is deep, oh. If, if I didn't know better, I would have called you a man. Man? Me a man? What man now? In fact, this interview is over. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, ma. Please, ma. Uh, sorry. Sorry for yourself. Don't you know justice has no gender? Ah, I'm just a humble symbol. Come on. Okay, Lady Justice, did you, I mean, see Justice on his conviction as a victory? Does it look like I can even see anything? The just thing to say would have been, did I think the conviction was a victory? And about that, there is nothing to think about. Because both sides made their case, and that is why I carry my scale, and I make sure I wear my blindfold to be impartial. <laughs> the appeal will be the determinant. After all the appeals, the case will be closed, because I will use my sword and I will kill the matter. Hmm. I still can't tell if you think um, this is a victory or not. I can't tell, too. And it's because of the three musketeers. The three musketeers? Yes. I mean the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. I mean, once upon a time, we were all very good friends. You know, friends that respected each other. You know, friends that understood each other's strengths and could make up for each other's weaknesses. But now, you know. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Check, check and balances. Uh, they are good. Uh, but is this a victory? The victory will not matter if the three amigos keep acting bad and bougie. 
You know, our friendship, it started out as checks and balances. But now it's just uh, checks and balances. Like, if you know what I mean. I mean, one of the amigos, namely the executive, has even become more and more clingy. Clingy? Coming to my house to squat. Can you imagine? Pickpocking his nose into my business. Gossiping about my matter. The judiciary should have handled the issue. But the executive clung onto the matter. Clingy race to the power of Asorok. Okay, uh, don't worry, Lady Justice. You know friends fight once in a while. I'm sure um, he'll come around. This is not just once in a while, though. This is becoming a habit. Uh -huh, and this fight is <laughs> looking like blackface and two-face. So this is not a victory in the fight against corruption? Victory or not, it does not matter if the victory is caused by destroying the balance of power and independence amongst the three amigos. They are all important arms of government, so they must respect themselves instead of interfering in each other's work. Because if they don't... Huh, if they don't, what will happen? If they don't, they will force me to use my sword. Uh, okay, that, that does not sound very just, uh, Lady Justice. Hmm, just be listening. Hmm. When the sword is down, hmm, I am Lady Justice. Hmm. But when I raise the sword to deal with people, you will call me Madam Justina. Ah, wow. Well, <laughs> well um... Well then, um, I don't know what else to say, Madam Justina. Ladies and gentlemen, please make some noise for Madam Justina. <laughs> My guest is a renowned brand strategist, public speaker, and businessman. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Charles Otudo. Please sit down, Charlie. Thank you so much. Good to see you. This is mine. And welcome back, The Dread. <laughs> yeah. As a brand strategist, yeah. all right, um, how do we position Nigeria hmm. as a brand? Seeing the kind of damage that Yahoo boys, drug dealers, and peddlers are currently doing to the image of the country, plus all the other sundry bad news, how do we position Nigeria as a brand? I that think we can sell. First step is to pause. Let's leave the Yahoo boys alone. Let's focus on the government and the way we communicate. We have uh, Voice of Nigeria. We have Ministry of Communications. We have um, all the press titles. Are they structured to be proactive? Everything else you're talking about are all droplets, drops in an ocean. If it's a nation state does not have a global strategy for communications, you will have all these issues coming up as if they are very serious. Every country has issues. Yeah. Every. In America, every day a black man is killed. Now, we have our own issues here, but do we have a strategy for communication? We are reactive or not proactive. So government needs to be proactive in There's strategy. a strategy to sweep all these things under the Not context. sweep, okay. but proactive in terms of being in, in sync with communication. You, you must be proactive in strategy. One, what is government even doing about this, all these things? All these issues? Well, you have, let's leave the Yahoo issue first. Mm -hmm. We have bigger problems. Boko Haram, BH, we have the kidnappings everywhere, mm -hmm. insecurity of lives and property. Let government do what government needs to do first and put it, let's be where we need to be. You can't travel between Abuja and Kaduna and Joss and be safe. The Yahoo boys are the least of your problems. No, no, I'm not saying they are the only problem. I just listed. I, you know, I said it is. Yes. That and there are many. Thing, yeah. so, so, so let's, for me, I believe the first step will be government put in place a global strategy that can communicate our essence and then be proactive, not reactive. Okay, fine. We are talking about government, you know, putting together strategy. Let us even look at the people who are in government. Hmm. Um, we, we just concluded elections. Some of these people were positioning themselves as the best brand for the people. You know, and look, I'm the best man to do the job. You know, the whole lot of advertising. Does this thing play any role, actually, in, in determining who wins the election? That is one. And secondly, are there ways that we can actually hold these guys accountable for overbranding? You know, selling us who they are not. Electorate. One, most of the people we see coming out every four years, yeah. they lack substance. And it's you. But brand strategies like you help us make them, help them look like they have Sorry. Advertising you? people. Okay. I'm not 
I did not work on any political brand this season for personal reasons. Okay. I didn't okay. believe in any of the brands. Okay. I didn't. I was approached by four. I did not. I did not work for any brand in this country because I'm a victim also. Thank you for not lying to the people. We'll take a break. We'll take a break. We'll be back. It's the other news. Don't even go anywhere. We're just starting. Come, we find out the matter that Binta is carrying on her head. And my conversation with Mr. Charles Tudor uh, continues. Uh, Charlie, yeah, I, I said something before we took that break. Mm -hmm. That in, in your line of business, mm -hmm. I mean, there are rules. Yeah. I want to believe there are rules for every business. True. Are there no laws that we can activate to stop politicians from false claims? For claiming to be who they are not. APCON itself has... Um, vetting so every advertising you create must go to apcon so i don't know how i don't run apcon yes. advertising practice Council of nigeria has the rules so every advert that was run must go through apcon for vetting that's an establishment set up by government and they are meant to control all that but i do not know because for instance someone has an issue with efcc mm -hmm. has an issue with three other courts, and then he's still running for election, how come? And he still gets elected. Exactly. That's the now, that is, it's an anomaly for me. And he's advertising himself as... As, honest. no, the, no, as the... the Meanwhile, the EFC, is busy, yeah, EFC is busy chasing me all over the place. Now, well, how come, I, I don't know, I, and the advert runs in all the papers. Yeah. So, there are rules of engagement or they but are on the list of people owing banks that are almost failing. That's the problem. Yeah. I don't know why it doesn't happen. I don't know why they cannot be prosecuted. So, but for me, I think, I think, I think, mm. when you leave a party and join a party, you have exemption and you have immunity. Only in this country. Yeah, like one chair. I will not say much again. <laughs> okay. Um, if Nigeria was handed to you as a brand to say position us so that we can attract foreign interest. What are those three key things? Hmm. This is a hard one. <laughs> Give me one second. Okay. It's well, okay. One, I would first of all unite this country. Okay. Unity. Unity. Create what I call the social contract where everybody respective of where they come from feel they belong to Nigeria. That's what's missing. Secondly, create what I call an economy that is inclusive. An inclusive economy is an economy that is bottom up, not up down. Okay, point number three. So I don't lose. I said three points. Security. Security. Security of lives and property. We will secure lives and ensure that everybody that's given a gun understand what a gun means. Beautiful. So these three things I. Fantastic. Now, having said these things, is there politics in your future? I don't know. I'm not what sure. What do you mean you don't know? I'm not sure yet. So who will do these three things? <laughs> I mean, if everybody throws their hands up in the air... Guess what? It's blowing the wind. It's blowing in the wind. All right, thank you very much, Chad, for coming through. Oh, wonderful people. It's still the other news. Please don't go anywhere. In recent years, sex crimes have become the order of the day. Who is to blame? Uh, the other news, senior crime correspondent Binta Badmos finds out. When it comes to rape, molestation, and all forms of sexual abuses, perpetrators hardly ever do like Akon and say, you can put the blame on me. Rather, they do like Shaggy and say, it wasn't me. And then they go ahead to blame a very, very interesting character. Well, could it be that it wasn't them? and that we have actually been failing to deal with the real mastermind of this crime. Since everybody is quick to say, the devil made me do it. The devil asked me to do it. The devil pushed me to it. Yeah, I needed answers. So I went out to speak with a security expert on more about this. 
Are you aware that the devil is the mastermind of most sexual violence, domestic violence cases across the country? Well, for me, I'm not aware because uh, I'm not a tenant with the devil. <laughs> I, I, I'm not aware of that. Uh, crime is a choice. It's actually a choice. And uh, whoever feels uh, he wants to commit crime, he, he should be ready to pay the price uh, because there are consequences to, to, to crime. And uh, most times people blame it, blame it on the devil. For me, I'm not aware of that. So what exactly is the main issue at hand when it comes to rape? Well, uh, rape has uh, uh, various forms of rape. Uh, like uh, we have the uh, diminished rape, that is uh, rape against uh, uh, people who, doesn't, who don't have uh, the uh, capacity to grant consent to that, like imbeciles and all those sort of people. We also have the marital rape. Mm -hmm. You know, here in Nigeria, we don't take note of marital rape. If you go and report that in the police station, the policeman will ask you if you are legally married and you say yes. Uh, did your parents collect here or bride price say yes? They will ask you to get out of the police station. And uh, we also have the um, acquaintance rape, you know, as both of us, we are used to each other, you know, we are friends and uh, I take you a lot, go out, get you ice cream, get you chicken mm. for about six, seven months, then you accident, you mistakenly pay me a visit and it happened, so it's called acqu acquaintance rape. So we also have the uh, statutory rape, you know, children that are growing up, uh, 11, 6, 7 years, you see mature male of 70 uh, sleeping with such, of such kind of children, we call it statutory rape because those children by law don't have the legal backings to grant consent. So what practical measures can be taken to curtail this rape? I actually have my suggestions, but I want to hear yours first. Okay, we're well, agency that was established by the former Inspector General of Police. That is the uh, uh, first uh, gender-based uh, unit. It was uh, collaborated with the Clean Foundation and Ford Foundation supported that, uh, that, uh, that program. The essence is to curtail with uh, uh, sexual violence uh, in the sense that they have to go after the element, the criminal elements, and bring them back and bring them to, to book. So uh, in a session of that, there should be a kind of massive sensitization, like you guys are doing in the media. You guys are doing a very good job because the only way you can get to the public is sensitization, either by print or by media. So when people get to know that such kind of offenses or crime is attached with a maximum punishment because such punishment is going to cause is going to uh, result to what we call deterrence measure so it will deter people from committing such acts mm. okay now that you've given your suggestion it's time to show you mine here is the latest technological advancement from the other news tech studio and this is called only water machine gone so all you need is just pull this and then Yes, you're shooting the devil. So how about you try this out? Yeah, go ahead. You Can I blow you off? It's not me. Oh, you're, you're not the, the devil. devil. Sorry, you're not the devil. The Where is the devil? You should know. You're the one who... I also spoke with a psychologist and a counsellor in the matters of rape and sexual violence against women and children to find out how victims can be helped and what to do in the event of a rape incident. The, the first thing is to get the rape victim to be on that place where they are able to first report that this has happened and, I mean, have to come to the hospital, maybe the, the doctors will check them out to see there are no damages and all of that, but more of the work I will be focusing on is the emotional damage that has happened to help, you know, the victim become emotionally stable again. When someone tells you not to tell your mom your dad, that is when you're even meant to tell your mom, that's when you're meant to tell your dad. So we start with the kids because I feel when they know what this is all about. Adults, let's say we are more, let's say we are matured enough or we know how to sort ourselves out, but not all. But I feel we need the kids, we need to tell them what this is all about in order for it, in order for this to be reduced, in order for sexual abuse to be reduced. The experts have spoken. If you are a victim of sexual violence, never be silent. Speak up your truth and shame the devil. Call 112 because there will be someone waiting to speak with you and free you of the burden. One more thing. Look out for molesters in the society and even those who are molesting the system through public office. I am Binta Bad Boss. Stay safe.
Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Binta. That was quite revealing. Incidentally, we have come to the end of today's show. Um, thank you for keeping a date with us. To be part of our live audience, please call these numbers. You can also follow us at the other news CTV across all social media handles. Uh, our people say men and women should be judged by the work of their hands. My name is okay. Show your handwork. <laughs>